Hello everyone, my name is Adriana and my partners Treasure, Courtney, and Megan are going to be discussing the social injustice and public issue of high rates of untreated mental illness in inmates. The large numbers of cases of mental illness in the U.S. correctional facilities has led to these facilities being called the new asylums. Approximately 25% of all inmates suffer from some type of mental illness. It can occur due to no longer being productive in society, identities being stripped, being away from loved ones, the new harsh environment, and exposure to violence. Some mentally ill inmates are mistreated by not being properly cared for due to treatments not always being up to date, limitations on prison financial resources, and inadequate or complete lack of medical treatment. From lack of treatment and no preparation from being back into society, about 80% of past inmates are detained and locked up within six months of their release. Depression, anxiety, and adjustment disorders can be huge influencers for committing suicide in prison. It is estimated that approximately 77% of mentally ill inmates attempt suicide and about 20% are successful. Inmates who struggle with mental illness may be overlooked of their mental instability because their behavioral change appears normal for prison life, which averts all acknowledgement of their issue and leaves the inmate suffering in solitude. The healthcare in prisons is a huge problem in today's society. It causes so many mental health problems, health problems in general, and in some cases it will even create them. It is very common for the prison workers to ignore these issues and just flat out ignore the prisoners' complaints. This not only worsens the environment as a whole that they live in, but it makes it so much harder for incarcerated men and women to adjust to the world after they serve their time. Some social justice movements that have helped incarcerated people all over the world have been the prison reform movement, which was started by Dorothy Dix. She noticed in the 1800s that prisons had horrible health conditions and were extremely dirty in general. She started by speaking to the state legislature and gained a lot of support for the cause, and that's essentially how this all started. Then, in 2011, the prison human rights movement was started by inmates in the Pelican Bay State Prison and was made to protest, ag protest against the long-term solitary confinement of security housing units as a result of alleged gang affiliation. Prison workers could put anyone in there and could extend it however long they wanted to, and it wouldn't count towards their sentences at all. After this movement came about, they decided to completely prohibit the extended periods of solitary confinement. Both of these movements were so beneficial and great steps in the right direction to ensuring that incarcerated men and women are treated better. In order to combat the growing problem of mental health in the prison system, it is important to take into consideration the legislative aspect. We must support politicians who believe in prison reform and write to our elected officials on the importance of improving the health services offered to incarcerated people. Also, advocating for solitary confinement to be deemed unconstitutional is also crucial, as it has been proven to not only worsen already present mental disorders, but also lead to the development of anxiety, depression, and psychosis in individuals. To add to this, health professionals can perform prison community services at correctional facilities. Most inmates come from low-income communities and disadvantaged backgrounds, which encourage unhealthy lifestyles such as smoking and substance abuse. Being educated by these health experts will be beneficial in allowing them to examine their own lives and hopefully make some changes that will last for a long time, even after they are released. Supporting organizations such as Citizens United for Rehabilitation of Errands and Amplifying Voices of Inmates with Disabilities are also good ways to get involved. For more information on how you can help, reach out to the email shown above.